January was the deadliest month of the pandemic so far. Restaurants are asking judges for emergency relief. The fact that none of us are vaccinated yet, and until we are, no one is comfortable. And I just love the fact that, yeah, we could say like, no, no one wants to do that. At the height of the pandemic, the restaurant industry sought to overturn Baltimore's ban on indoor dining. They argued it was the only way they could stay in business. But as studies linked indoor dining with increased COVID-19 infection and death rates, cooperatively owned restaurants voted to take a different path. It was just an obvious choice for us. Collectively, we weren't comfortable yet. Which is why we don't do indoor seating right now. The food service industry is known for its exploitative wages, unsafe working conditions, and high turnover. This has given a rise to a growing number of worker co-ops. They operate democratically, pay living wages, and prioritize worker safety. When the pandemic hit, co-ops sprung into action. Because of the people that's a part of it, so many brilliant minds, you know, working together, and it's not just falling on one person. I believe that's what really helped keep us afloat. In March 2020, Red Emma's closed its doors and with it, their primary source of revenue, a typically bustling bookstore, restaurant, and bar, all of which doubled as an organizing and event space. They then shifted to deliveries, outdoor events, and opened a general store with other local co-ops. I've been here four years, so the relationships I've built here with my colleagues, that's what got us through. Later, they opened for takeaway delivery and outdoor dining. Restaurants typically operate on thin margins. The pandemic forced the long-term closure of as many as one in six. Half the jobs in Baltimore's restaurant sector were lost. Overall, 30% of small businesses said they feared closing permanently. But there's reason to believe co-ops were able to buck these trends. Comprehensive data is not yet available, but a 2020 survey found that the vast majority of co-ops did not experience permanent job losses or closures. And now some shuttered businesses are reopening as worker co-ops. It was March of 2020. The pandemic dealt Joe Squared Pizzeria and Bar a death blow. It was kind of a big meeting. It was kind of like, okay, this is it. You know, it felt very final. It felt very much like, you know, the end of an era. After 15 years as a fixture in Baltimore Station North neighborhood, co-owners Joe Edwardson and his mom, Kathy Palikoff, were forced to close their doors. I've only been here maybe three years, but it definitely feels like a special place. And so it was sad to kind of see it go. And yeah, I definitely did not think it'd be coming back. But they soon found hope. The former workers and owners began exploring worker ownership. And after receiving a number of pandemic-related grants, loans, and support from other worker owners, Joe Squared was able to reopen in December of 2020. I don't know that we would have gotten the support if we were just trying to come back traditionally. It's a more democratic way to operate. At Joe Squared, every collective member gets a vote. Most decisions require a simple majority. And if the restaurant's successful, we're all successful as uh, profit sharers. The workers decide things like how much they are paid. One of the main benefits is that the kitchen is part of the, the tip pool now. So we all, we've been pooling tips forever, but uh, now the kitchen is part of that. So it's back of the house, front of the house, kind of being treated a lot more equally. This was paid for through a $3 charge on all orders. An example of how wages, salaries, and benefits can be higher in a co-op. Converting to worker ownership is full of hurdles and can be a lengthy process. Five months after reopening, Joe Squared is still transitioning to worker ownership. We had a couple issues getting all of our documents and like financial documents in place. Another issue we had was like trying to really pin down what it's going to look like for us because every co-op is different. But they didn't have to do it alone. The people over at Bread, they help businesses become worker-owned co-ops. They've been super helpful because none of us really knew how to do this before now. Bread is the Baltimore Roundtable for Economic Democracy. It works with 20 co-ops in Baltimore. Its national counterpart, Seed Commons, lends to about 60 nationwide. Their networks were created to share knowledge and financial resources and have proven effective at weathering the pandemic. Over the course of the pandemic, zero of the businesses that have received loans from the Seed Commons infrastructure have closed as a result of the pandemic. Kate Khatib helped launch Bread and Seed Commons after co-founding Red Emma's in 2004. So one of the things that we found as we started to build Red Emma's and we started to grow it is that we really had to be also thinking about and, and adapting and creating our own sources of financing if we wanted to see cooperatives grow. One of Baltimore's oldest co-ops, Emma's sought to empower workers traditionally marginalized in the restaurant industry. Today, Emma's has a dozen worker owners, including Whitney Roberts. When I was growing up, I never thought that I could be an owner, you know, with my demographics, my background, and the way my life has, you know, dealt the cards out to me. Emma's uses consensus-based decision-making, which can limit how quickly the co-op can act. 
The only time that it's hard to come to consensus is if it's a block, but the, usually if people block, it's for a, a good reason, and that's being like heard, and we, okay, well, why do you feel like this, you know? One of the biggest limitations co-ops face is that they're unable to access traditional loans, which often require collateral or for individuals to go into debt. Emma's use what they learned to help other co-ops. One of the things we learned when um, we expanded Red Emma's to the point that we were actually trying to, to create and sustain living wage jobs is that we needed to scale up and we needed capital to do that. And we had an incredibly difficult time getting access to capital. So Emma's turned to The Working World, a New York-based firm that loans money to co-ops, payable back on favorable terms, and without requiring collateral. They gave us one of the first pieces of our financing to expand our business in 2013. And then we went back to them and said, you know, this was so hard for us. We want to create a way for other co-ops to do this. We want to create a revolving loan fund here in, in Baltimore City. This led to the creation of Bread, which operates locally in Baltimore, and Seed Commons, which is now a $25 million fund that spans 26 cities. Don't look at personal credit. We don't take collateral interests in businesses other than the equipment that, that's purchased with the loans. That's a huge game changer for small businesses like ours. This infrastructure has helped co-ops weather COVID-19. Because of the resilience of those businesses. It's because of the resilience of the cooperative model. It's because of the hard, dedicated work of the people who run those businesses. And it's also, to a certain extent, I think, true because those businesses are a part of this much larger network, that we're able to work together to create networks of solidarity, to provide mutual aid across geographic boundaries. In 2021, with the financial support of Bread, Emma's announced plans to purchase two buildings, which will become their forever home. A growing number of cities are supporting the efforts of cooperatives to build sustainable and inclusive businesses. But this support often pales in comparison to what's offered to big corporations. In 2019, Baltimore pledged $47,000 to help Bread convert businesses to worker ownership. By comparison, a year earlier, the city made a failed $3.8 billion bid to secure an Amazon headquarters. In future installments of this series, supported by a grant from Solutions Journalism, We'll meet worker owners in New York, Chicago, and Cleveland. For The Real News, this is Jessel Noor.